This video is all about blue jets, which in my opinion is some of the most amazing weather phenomena on the planet. If you don't know much about blue jets, welcome to the rabbit hole of crazy upper atmospheric phenomena. If you have heard of blue jets before, stick around for some brand new footage. I got new high speed footage, new color footage, and Everything I have here is probably 75% of all blue jet footage in existence. In the video, I go into a little bit of what they are, how they're a challenge to see and photograph, and then if you stick around till the end, I delve a little bit into current theories on how they're formed. Now, I'm Paul Smith, the photographer, storm chaser, citizen scientists, and I've collaborated with the likes of NASA and universities and YouTubers like Picos Hank. You can find my work in various magazines and journals, TV shows, documentaries, even in kids books. And now I've decided to put a little more energy into YouTube videos because I just have so much footage to share. So if you enjoy unique and exciting, unusual nature, please sub and follow along. I gotta call Hank, gotta call Hank. Ah, it's like three o'clock in the morning. I can't do that. A really wise man once said, you can spend your lifetime pursuing Mother Nature's beauty and she will never cease to blow your mind. Oh, blue jet, blue jet. And I totally agree. And I finally got my mind blown by several super rare blue jet encounters. This was after years and years of searching. I could finally cross the blue jet off my transient luminous event Pokemon list. Cause you gotta catch them all, right? If you don't know a lot about blue jets, I'm not sure that it's accurate to say that they're rare, but they're definitely hard to capture and there's only been a handful of them documented worldwide. So what makes them so hard to capture? Well, there's two main things that are really working against you from being able to see them. Number one, and probably the most important reason, is that they're usually hidden by clouds. Because, of course, they happen right at the cloud top and they occur in these really stony environments that usually come with cloud cover all around. So unless you've got yourself something like, let's say, a space station so you can get up above the clouds, you're going to be cursing the clouds for blocking your view. And then the second thing that makes blue jets difficult to observe is simply their physical appearance. Because for one thing, they're blue and violet, and this blue end of the color spectrum really doesn't travel very well over distance due to an effect called Rayleigh scatter. So for us, this means that over distance, our eyes and our cameras will have a really hard time seeing something blue like this. Also, at night, we really need that contrast to be able to see things in the dark. That's how our eyes and cameras work. So any kind of sky brightening with things like moonlight, light pollution, and even little things like the headlights from cars will destroy that contrast and you'll just lose the blue jets in that mud of a bright night sky. Also, most blue jets just simply aren't that luminous compared to things like sprites whoa, and gigantic jets blue jets are just not that bright fast and faint is a really bad combo for observing at night you don't have to just take my word for it here's the experience of somebody who's captured dozens of them with his camera so far can you please state your name for the camera james what what was it that we caught with the camera the other week um Blue jets. Did you see them with your eyes? No.
So yeah, with all these things combined, hopefully you're getting a picture of why there's very few blue jets captured, and as such, why we still have so much to learn about these things. So what do we know so far? Honestly, we really don't know anything for certain because all we really have is theories based upon our observations. Obviously, we can't recreate a 30 mile long plasma jet here on the ground. So all the information we're getting about these things is through visually seeing them occur in the sky. Current theories suggest something like a cloud boundary discharge where charge layer is sheared at height, leaving this super tumultuous region of hail and heavy precipitation kind of bubbling up through the center of the cloud. And then under the right conditions, you can get that fountain-like discharge of excitation. Basically, a blue jet is like an eruption of an ionization cloud, traveling at something like 100 kilometers a second. Absolutely crazy, right? So my personal feelings about blue jets, I think it's perfectly obvious to anybody watching that I'm completely obsessed with this subject. But I think we really need to research these things more because they're going to help us understand more about the planet. Things like the global electric circuit that might even help out with us understanding climate change or just energy in general. I mean, these things are so big and powerful. How can it not benefit us to understand them more? But besides all this, with the science and the nature, which is obviously amazing, I just find blue jets visually stunning. Like to think of that blue cone shooting out of the top of a beautifully structured cloud. To me, that's just nature at its finest. There's nothing can beat it. And chasing blue jets, to me, I kind of think of it as like being on a safari, right? At night or a fishing trip. You, you go through all the research, all the planning, all the efforts to get to the spot. And then it's just like if you're in the right place at the right time, with the right gear and the right settings, you might just get lucky enough to catch something that only a few people on the planet have ever seen before. 